Hello everyone, welcome back to Super Mario Sunshine, my name is Dario. In the last part, we did kind of a montage of a lot of red coin secret missions that were pretty much just the same levels we already covered during the playthrough. Uh, and, and during that part, I kind of covered the development of Super Mario Sunshine. Uh, this part's going to be kind of a part two, if you will, because now we're going to be tackling the blue coins in many of the various areas of Isle Delfino. And the reason I'm going to montage this because, well, as I stated before, there's 240 blue coins in the game. I have almost 100, so I'm not even, well, I'm like a fourth of the way there, but, uh, so there's, in the main areas, aside from Delfino Plaza and Corona Mountain, there's 30, 30 in each, and you can see I'm not even close in some areas. Serena Beach, just Serena Beach and Pinna Park are like I'm halfway there, but everywhere else I'm pretty low at. Some of them I did skip, but um, the thing about the blue coins and really is that there's 30 in each of those areas. Uh, Corona Mountain has 10, and Delfino Plaza itself has four, uh, 20. So, I'll, I might leave Corona and we'll do that like in another part, but I mainly want to get the big areas out of the way first. And, I'll just admit it here, yes, I'm going to be using a guide to do it, because you know what, it's way too hard. Like, certain blue coins are only going to be available in certain episodes, I'd have to go through every episode and run around the whole area to really find it, and it's like... You know, I know why they did it back then, because, you know, they had to extend the game's, like, long, you know, the, extend the game's playtime. You know, instead of having backtracking, they just put in a, well, in a sense it is backtracking, but, like I said, I don't, you know, call it cheap, call it whatever. I, I don't like to use a guide, but in this case, it's, it's, how, how much time do I want to spend just being legit about this? It is very possible. There are people who've done it. But there are also people who have more time than I do, so, you know, call it cheap, quit the video, say I'm a dummy. Um, but anyways, so, that's my reasoning for it, and I, I don't think so many people would mind. So, anyways, uh, enough rambling, I'm just gonna, we're gonna go back to the format of before and uh, montage this, so... Hopefully when all is said when all is said and done we'll we'll see. So anyways, see you guys at the end. Hello everyone, this is post commentary Dario here, and we're gonna be picking up right where we left off from the last part, continuing our discussion about beta elements or unseen things in Super Mario Sunshine, whether they're hidden on the game disc or hidden behind something you can't see, or just something you might not know. Last part, we finished off on talking about how in the flooded version of Delfino Plaza is potentially based off of the earlier version of the, the level, or it could just be something that they threw together so players didn't get to where they weren't supposed to go. Uh, continuing on that note, and this is going to be a good segue into going from what's actually into game, in the game than what was changed you know, to actual beta stuff is that from certain levels you can see differences that they ended up doing. Uh, for example, in uh, Rico Harbor, looking toward, you can actually see Gelato Beach from Rico Harbor, but the closer you get, like if you were able to get close to it, you would notice that there were some differences that they made to the level. Uh, if you look at the picture, you'll see, and this is probably one of the more notable ones of the game, is that the Gelato Beach uh, Tower, the Sandbird Tower, has uh, pillars around it when the final game does not. You could also actually see this in the level uh, the level entry. You know how each of the level entries is like a paint splot and you can look and see like a little video of the level being played. You could actually see the, the columns in there. Why they removed them, um, nobody really knows. But it's just something, it's just something kind of interesting because it had to be pretty late for them to remove those columns. Who knows, maybe they had something more they wanted to do with them. Uh, anyone's guess is as good as mine, or <laughs> anyone else's for that matter. 
Uh, so moving along, talking about Gelato Beach, um, if you look at Gelato Beach, and of course you can't see any of this in actual gameplay, you'd have to once again use Dolphin or some other, uh, I don't even think Game Shark, but something to like actually move the camera away and change its location. You'll see, uh, for example, Sirena Beach during the daytime and you know, the thing, something's missing from it or some things that are added to it. Um, Pina Park, you can only see the back of the Ferris wheel and not really much else. And even if you were to get around to it, they not much modeled. There's not much modeled there. Delfino Plaza. Uh, Delfino Plaza is interesting because I can't really tell and everyone can make their own uh, assumptions on it. I can't really tell if it's based on an earlier model Delfino Plaza or they just kind of just put only what the player could see so that's you know something something to think about um and then outside of that i already talked about noki bay and uh it's various differences in the game um you know the hidden book i mentioned that too something else worth noting is how noki bay is probably one of the hardest levels to see the only other level i think you could see noki bay in is from Pianza Village and funny enough if you like it's really hard to see I can't I couldn't even do it when I looked at it but apparently you can see it from Pianza Village and they really do they really did their best to try to model it even though I I doubt many people saw it and I think that's pretty much it in terms of what you can see from other levels there might be a thing or two I'm missing um but I'll show off in a later video I'm planning to show off uh how you can actually see the whole island of Delfino, uh, the whole, uh, yeah, Delfino Isle. You can see all of it from almost all the levels. There's, there's the map for the whole island is in each level pretty much, but for you to actually see it is really hard. There's one trick I know, and I'll show it in a later episode. Anyways, so, but I think Gelato Beach has the most complete picture of Delfino Isle, but each level has its own. Um, Liber like liberties they had to take with it uh it's it's hard to explain I'll, I'll put up the picture so you guys can see if i haven't already and you can kind of see the differences of how they changed the shape of the island for each level you know whether the level had a lot of uh objects in it so they had to take away some things or you know depending on the level's location like peanut park for example you can see a lot of the island from peanut park so they probably had so they had to you know keep certain things Any, anyways you get the idea um i'll let you guys make your own judgment about it anyways uh the last thing i'll mention about the map geometry that you would see is that corona mountain is pretty much always seen from any level because it's you know a mountain and you would think the crater would actually be modeled or have some kind of significant detail about it really but because you never see the top of it, it's actually pretty hollowed out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like I said, if you see the picture, you can take a look for yourself. And it's kind of funny. I mean, it's no, not, not hilarious, but just interesting because, I don't know, never would have thought to see the inside of Corona Mountain from, you know, Gelato Beach or Pina Park or something like that. So, I don't know, it's a little fun fact. Moving on to unused graphics, there's quite a few on the game's disc, but there's really only one I want to mention, and that's the fact that Corona Mountain has its own uh, episode banner. You know, the same that you would see if you entered a normal level like Rico Harbor or something, how it has the name across the top, and you can choose which episode you want to do. Corona Mountain has one of those, and this further supports the fact that at one point or another, Corona Mountain would have been its own level. Or, I mean, it's possible maybe they intended so that way you enter Corona Mountain and there's only one, you know, episode to choose from and it says, like, defeat Bowser or something. Uh, they do a similar thing in Super Mario Galaxy 1. But looking at the next bit of evidence, it's easy to see why it might be that Corona Mountain might have been its own full-scale level. So by using Action Replay, it's possible to access the stage select menu of Super Mario Sunshine. There's two to go between. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to go between them, but the interesting part about them is that they reference 
the normal levels, of course, that you go to, Bianca Hills, Sirena Beach, and stuff like that. But there's also four extra levels it mentions by name. And these four levels are Hotel La Crema, Erut Rock, Warship Island, and Fire Shrine. Now, that's... When you try to access... Like, when you try to click on these I, uh, these levels, the game just crashes. Because I'm assuming all the data that refers to them no longer exists. Uh, so... It's just very interesting that there's, and this is a, you can tell this is an early list of level names because they're unlocalized. Uh, looking further into it, there is a localized list of file names, so that means that the localization team probably used them, the North American localization team. But there's an unlocalized list, and that's the one that names the four levels that um, people never heard of before. At least most people never heard of. There's also mention of like you know test map and scale map and other crop like that but you know who cares about that so with that information in mind now we get to the the last real big bit of the beta information of super mario sunshine and that's the fact that in the japanese version of the game there's an extra file that was removed from later versions meaning it's not the north america version or europe or anything else it's a, like a folder or some kind of file i'm not quite sure how game design works like internally but it contains two message files, one naming a list of stations in the game, like train stations, while the other file lists st dialogue for like buying tickets and stuff like that. So the first file we'll talk about is a station list, and it has a list of stations for various locations in the game, like uh, Isle Delfino, or Del Delfino Plaza, Rico Harbor, Bianca Hills, and stuff like that. Like each of those has its own like train station along with the four other levels that we mentioned before in the stage select list, uh, Erut Rock, L uh, Hotel La Cremia, Fire Temple. But then there's also two more it mentions, which is Lighthouse Island and what's the other one? Uh, it's that name right there. I don't know. You could say it yourself. There's also Corona Mountain uh, as listed as an entrance, which, you know, further leads to the fact that it might have been its own full level at one point. So... Yeah, so in an early version of the game, probably the same, probably in the same trailer that was first shown at Space World back then, they had the intention of, in order to get to certain locations of the island, you took a train instead of just hopping into uh, a paint spot. And I don't know, to me, that's just so fascinating. Like, it, it's, I don't know, it's just, I think what makes it so fascinating is the fact that, like, it's kind of like it's realistic in a way because you know you get to places by taking the bus or the train or a car or something so and not to mention the game you know is made by nintendo japanese they take the train to a lot of places so i don't know that's just cool that they originally had that as the intention and um i assume judging by the next uh file talking about using tickets or coins to buy certain things you would have in order to access more levels you would have had to you know, have your ticket stamped to show you had access to that level. Like, you know, you had enough to go to like Bianco Hills, but not enough to go to Peanut Park and stuff. And you had to collect enough coins or get the right stamp or shines or something like that. So, um, and that's what the next file uh, list uh, talks about is how there's dialogue. And I'm going to put that up on screen. There's dialogue talking about, um, and once again, this is all in Japanese. So it was translated saying, oh, will you be riding with us today? Please let me see your ticket. Now departing for, insert whatever here. Um, will you be purchasing a travel stamp? The price comes to blank soul coins. So yeah, all that further leads to the fact that that's how you got from place to place. And the last, I said that was the last bit of information, uh, but really the last bit of information that kind of really, I guess, solidifies everything is the fact that there's this removed scenario where Mario has to has to help out a family of tourists who just arrived on Isle Delfino. And th it's this whole long li like translated list talking about like uh, exchanging dialogue. But the gist of it is um, assuming at Hotel Delfino or Hotel La Crimea, uh, they need like a family needs help getting their luggage up to their room or to look for their daughter and stuff like that. And presumably if you would have did that whole scenario you would have got soul coins or a shine even if they if they existed in this version so 
So yeah, that's pretty much going to cover the better content that I found interesting in this episode. Uh, I hope many of you did find it interesting, maybe learned something new that you didn't learn from any of the number of episodes about Super Mario Sunshine on YouTube. Uh, I wanted it to be a primary goal to focus on things that nobody else really covered or didn't get much traction. And uh, the last thing I want to mention is how my own personal experience with better content, which isn't much, but I do remember when I was a kid, I was with my brother. This was, I think the, the game came out in like 2002, so this had to be early 2002 or 2001. But we went to Walmart and like around the like GameCube kiosk, I wish I had a picture of it, but it was something that looked like this screen that I'm putting up right now. I don't know if it was this exact one, but it, I remember it looking a lot like it. Like, you know, you would go up and then you pick which uh, level you want and play it. And each of them have their own episode and stuff like that. Uh, I really don't remember like the actual gameplay. I want to say this version still had like the number in the corner for your health instead of the little notches of the sun indicating how much health you have left. It was like still the number, uh, but I could be wrong about that. But yeah, I but I do remember vividly like seeing the the like a screen like that. Um, so yeah, that's I re I really do miss. Uh, you know, demo discs and going, having to go to a store to, to interact with stuff like that, which actually, I mean, that still happens now. Uh, at the time of recording this, Super Mario Odyssey, I think, is starting to have demo units sent out to Best Buy, so you can actually go and play and stuff. So, yeah, actually, now you think about it, the practice is still very much alive, and I'm glad, hopefully, at least a good number of children will experience with what, you know, me and my brother got to experience back then. And... With all of that being said, uh, that's pretty much it, actually. Uh, I remember, uh, I guess the last little tidbit, I remember reading something online about someone having, like, they said they have like, had, like, a demo disc of Super Mario Sunshine, but they had no way to, like, um, rip the data off the file. It wasn't, like, a demo disc. It was, like, a developer copy or something like that, which, I mean, probably wasn't true, but, I mean, hell, it's fun to think about, so. But anyways... Uh, that'll pretty much wrap up this uh, bed of under unused content overview uh, of Super Mario Sunshine. Um, I really hope this was more interesting than just watching me montage a bunch of stuff. So, uh, as stated before, I hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, in the next part, I'm just going to start doing... The next part will be post-commentary too, but I'm just going to be recording over myself. There's not going to be any... Uh, talk about better stuff or anything like that so yeah now this episode's about to end so now i just gotta kill like 10 more seconds so um you know flippity gibbet and why, why am i just staying on the menu so long i forgot what was going on anyways the episode's about to end i i, I ruined that i'm sorry goodbye <laughs> so hey everyone this is gonna be post post commentary i guess because as I was editing this video, some new information about Super Mario Sunshine just came out. And this comes from Retro Gamer, who sat down with Nintendo's uh, Yoshiaki Kazumi, who worked on Sunshine, I think, 64, and is now working on, you know, the new Super Mario Odyssey. Anyways, uh, in an interview, instead of talking about Odyssey, they ended up talking about Super Mario Sunshine. And Kazumi revealed that instead of focusing on 3D platforming, like the game is now, they were going to focus on, and this is quote, exploring the idea of a disaster recovery mission style game. That's kind of a mouthful, but, um, so there's, it's, it's not that long. There's only like a paragraph or two talking about it, but he says, uh, in an early prototype, the player wasn't searching for shine sprites and instead the story was set on an island that was slowly being polluted by enemies. The idea was that you'd watch pollution away with Flood and also use it to defeat the boss enemy, the source of the pollution. Now, this is really interesting because a lot of promotional material for Super Mario Sunshine seems to suggest that this was originally the original plot point of the game. Looking at old magazine ads, TV ads, or just ads in general, you would see like a lot of the focus was placed on cleaning up the island and stopping the pollution and stuff like that. But then when you actually played the game, like, the you know, stopping the pollution is part of it, but then it qu kind of quickly just shifts to just being a normal Mario game with 
you know, the pollution kind of just being an afterthought. So it's just really interesting how originally it was a much bigger focus on the game. And it's, this is now confirmation of that fact. So anyways, I just wanted to share that. It was something that just came out uh, as, of, as I was making this. So I just wanted to throw it in there real quick. Anyways, now for real. Thank you for watching.